just to the north of India. Uh, the, the, the population is um, around 40 million people. The um, country, though, is very poor. So, um, naturally, hope targets these kinds of areas to run programs in. And uh, indeed, this, this, this is uh, exactly the case in Nepal. Last year, a massive earthquake hit Kathmandu, or just outside of Kathmandu. Over 8,000 people lost their lives, 21,000 people were injured, and hundreds of thousands of people were displaced across the country. And the displacement doesn't mean what it could mean here. It, it means that they're without anything. So massive migration in towards the cities. Um, Kathmandu, already a poor city, now becomes even poorer because the resources are spread even thinner. So the campaign itself involved 46 volunteers going from, mostly from the UK, mostly from London in fact, the London Church, and uh, the, this particular program was sponsored by the London Church and organised by the London Church. The, uh, we, we were joined by um, volunteers from as far flung as US, um, uh, China, and uh, we had some local volunteers as well. Some of you may recognise uh, Maya Marshall there. So she joined us, and uh, more about that later. I'm going to hand over to Saraj, who's going to tell us a little, about, a little bit about the school that Hope runs there. So the school um, run by Hope is in a very poor area of Kathmandu. There's uh, 107 children, ranging from the ages of 4 to 14. Um, and all the volunteers, the 46 volunteers, ranging from Sky being the youngest, 7 to 77, we all had different responsibilities. And the Patel family, we were very privileged, we were able to teach. Um, the classrooms were very basic. They had hardly any equipment in. They were using doors as like whiteboards. Um, and their knowledge of English was quite basic. But even then, we were really able to help and make a difference. Um, and the other, the other area we were really able to help with was to um, help the parents as well. We managed to speak to the parents and we were able to talk to them about um, dangers of alcohol abuse, just encouraging them, even though money was so, so tight, to encourage their children to carry on in education, um, to talk to them about health, hygiene. Um, and I remember just before going, feeling like, but we're not really trained teachers. What can we help? Wouldn't it be better if we just send some funds? And I remember just thinking and feel, coming back feeling like we really did make a difference. And I'll remember this for the rest of my life as, as well as you know, the children. So I really had, it had a big impact. You know, um, uh, as you can see there, the spirit of the children was just amazing. Yeah. The, the energy, the joy, and hopefully some of that comes through in the photo. <laughs> they were just fantastic, and, and that was the environment of the school. And I'm going to invite Brianna to share a little about, about her connection with the children. The children, all of them really loved to sing, and you could just feel a sense of joy about them all. And even though most of them didn't really know English, you really connected with them, and they were just brilliant. And um, I just want to reiterate what what, what Saraj said about um, that that feeling of you know can we actually be useful, and the the way it works out. And I got some advice from John Partington before going, and he said, "Listen, relax. You already know what you need to know. Just go with the heart to give." And uh, he was absolutely right. It, it was tremendously effective. So I've just went through a couple of these slides. They're just examples of uh, the children in the school. Sky has a line here. Help! <laughs> <laughs> Hope worldwide fed the children. Well done. <laughs> You, you got the impression that a lot of the children didn't get regular meals and uh, certainly the families weren't sure of where their next meal was coming from. The, the, the existence over there was very hand to mouth. So it was really encouraging to see the school giving regular meals every day. They could count on this meal. 
The other thing that I wanted to do was uh, augment the school, so build an extra room. When we arrived, the children, were, the, the youngest class, the, the nursery class, were meeting in the playground. So that was their classroom. If you can imagine, two degrees Celsius in the mornings, it, it was really uncomfortable. So we wanted to leave the place, having built a, a new room for them. What's being built here, I don't, some, some of you may recognise um, the gentleman on the left is Rob Oddy from Manchester Church. He's building a foundation there for a kitchen, a new kitchen, and then freeing up the existing kitchen to be used as a classroom. And Ben Woodworth there, being a labourer, <laughs> doing a good job. And uh, it, was, it was encouraging to see that kitchen completed. So this is half done, but it did actually make it to completion before we left. Another thing that we got to do was follow some of the children home. This was particularly impacting, just seeing how they lived. So young Sureshman Udum up in the top left-hand corner, Sureshma was in our class. When we went home with her, the top right photograph shows her home, and that, that's the entirety of their home. So the, uh, the entire family in one room, uh, with, with very, very little in terms of possessions, um, and indeed in terms of means of existence. And subsistence. Um, their father in the middle of the photograph, um, his health wasn't, wasn't good. It certainly wasn't good enough to work. That meant that in order to pay the rent, Udum needed to work. Udum is 13 years old, so just in the middle there. At the bottom left, you can see him putting his boots on. He just changed out of his school shoes, just putting his work boots on. And we caught up with him later at work, bottom right, where he worked at, at a garage. He's just repairing a bike there and uh, on his own as well. Um, Udum needed to work about one and a half hours before school every day and between three to four hours after school every day. We also got to follow Sunny home. So Sunny in our class, um, top left is her school, top right at home. The, the bottom right shows her with her mother. Her mother works as a labourer. Um, there's not a lot of work uh, freely available in Kathmandu. But with um, uh, the earthquake impact particularly, there's a lot of labouring work. And, and that's what she does, she carries bricks, she carries uh, building materials, and that, that's her job. Um, we, we were very blessed because um, Sunny's siblings came home while we were there. And we were able to interview them and just ask them, you know, could you explain to us some of the benefits of the school that Hope runs? And they explained that they'd actually gone to the Hope School and that they were at college now. That was something that they wouldn't have been able to do had the school not been in existence. Um, the Hope School has been running for 20 years. Uh, it was at the point of closure last year, but um, it was uh, adopted by the London Church for specific funding, and uh, it's, it's going to be able to be sustainably uh, maintained going forward. Very encouraging. We didn't just... Um, spent time on the programme, we got three days at the end. We went to visit Maya in Pokhara. And I did want to share a couple of um, pictures of Maya because she, she sent her regards. She went way out of her way to give to us. Um, she hosted us, she looked after us, fed us, um, took us to see the country. Some of you nodding, you know what Maya's like. Um, this is her entire family, so you, you may be able to see John and Cameron, you recognise those. But her family there, a lot of them comprise the Pokhara Church, and it's a fantastic little church. So we had a great time. Uh, that's the view from her back garden, I had to show that. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Annapurna 1 there, eight, eight kilometres high. So the school, and uh, indeed the work of Hope, um, the, the contribution that we're about to take isn't going to specifically go to this programme, it's for the General Fund of Hope but it will go towards a number of programs and indeed keeping hope itself going. Um, there are hundreds of these programs going around the world and uh, the, the needs are real and the, 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 they're um, pretty constant as well. The, the, the need for funding is there. I also want to encourage you, if you're considering taking part in one of these programs, we had a fantastic time. This is a, a clip of the Hope website and it shows some of the programmes running for this year. And if you're considering it, by all means, you know, we'll be around a little bit later, come and chat to us. Um, certainly chat to John Rose Partington. 
it, it is a tremendous life-changing experience. It's fantastic. I would thoroughly recommend it. You could probably see there that Kathmandu is uh, on uh, this year's program. Um, hopefully, you know, there'll, there'll be some programs in Africa next year, but uh, we'll see where that goes. But if you're considering it, I thoroughly recommend it. Before the baskets come around, let's go ahead and bow our heads and pray. Father, we come before you. We really thank you for all the blessings that you give us. You, you really are such a rich and benevolent God. We thank you for daily food. We thank you for um, so all, all kinds of sustenance, heat, warmth, clothes, um, work for us, a meaningful existence, Lord. And we thank you also that we can give. You give us in abundance and it overflows. And out of that overflow, we, we have plenty to, to give to those who need. And I really thank you. What a privileged position. Pray that you use it powerfully, Father. Um, bless that contribution across the world, whether it's in Africa, whether it's uh, uh, here in Kathmandu. Um, we pray that you bless our hearts as well, so that we're more and more um, generous. We really thank you for this time. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen.